HIPAA account settings. This is one of the key areas where your users will self-service to go update their information about their ePHI. Uh, basically, this could include basic information like medical history, any kind of allergies, uh, details about the user's Medicare, Medicaid, or insurance. It can include detailed questionnaires associated with a trial, a medical trial, possibly for a prescription. They may have to complete certain steps like setting up a telehealth appointment and answering prerequisite questions, etc. So really the list goes on here. We're gonna dive into some different scenarios and we would encourage you to think about how this might impact your business. What might you be able to gain from what you see other folks doing? And with that, let's get into it. Okay, so for this first example, what you're gonna see is a pretty standard kind of dashboard for the user. And for this HIPAA dashboard, this particular user has basic information. They also have insurance and demographic details included. Now, one of the first things that we wanna point out is that we do recommend whenever you're working with a HIPAA solution that all of the data that goes into the system have logging and tracking, privacy, workflows and rules, multi-factor authentication for anyone who can access it, as well as role-based authentication and authorization, uh, specifically uh, making sure that only the people who should have access to the data have access to it, uh, being able to kind of tokenize the data and have it encrypted at rest. Uh, this really helps with kind of meeting the baseline standards for the security rule and the privacy rule for HIPAA. Now there's a lot more to both of those, but just diving in, uh, some of the main things that we'll point out are that you can basically include, as long as you're meeting the privacy and security rule, you can include any information that you actually need. And you're gonna want to be able to present this to the user as to why they need to provide this information in some form or format. Uh, here in this particular case, these are just some example fields where we're showing the insurance information and the demographic information for a pretty standard account settings dashboard. Now, if we kind of dig into this in more detail, uh, you can also see in this particular example, we're looking at some of their tax information, assuming they have a business. Um, now, normally, whenever we're setting up HIPAA, uh, one of the things that we want to do is we want to keep everything as simple as possible, and we want to reduce the amount of data that we need to intake uh, to only the kind of the minimum necessary. So in this particular case, you can see that everything is presented much more concisely. And this is kind of a big takeaway that we would encourage you to look at when you are setting up your HIPAA account settings. What is the kind of minimum that you need and try to stick with that as much as you can. Now this is for the benefit of the consumer, uh, for the user who's gonna be interacting with the system, we want to kind of reduce the footprint of their PHI data. In addition, it also is helpful for conversion optimization and overall customer sat whenever they're interacting with your uh, e-commerce, your pharmacy, your portal system, et cetera. Okay, so here we're just asking for really basic information, uh, basically sex, state of birth, and age, and then we're also providing them with kind of like a high level view so they can see what their customer information is. And this includes their doctor and their delivery zone. So they have the ability to quickly edit these and modify them. And they can also go in and change their notification settings as well as their membership level. So this is a really nice kind of presentation model. Um, okay, another example here is uh, in this particular set of account settings, you can see that this particular user is specifying their date of birth. Uh, they also have notification settings in here that are pretty quick and easy to modify. Um, and then they have emergency info and then intake information. And on the intake side of things, this can be really helpful depending on how your business works and what you're using this platform for. Are you using it as a pharmacy? Are you using it to go on scheduled appointments? Are you using it to complete a medical trial? Um, really the list goes on. So the more information that you can get that is going to reduce that kind of intake process, that's certainly helpful. And of course, we wanna, again, keep it as minimal as possible. So there's really a balance to be had there. Uh, but here you can see, this is a nice example. It's a pretty clean presentation of how to gather this profile information uh, upfront before that appointment happens. Okay, and in this particular case, you can see this is a really, really simple dashboard where we're getting the social and the date of birth. 
And that's really kind of the primary PHI information. Uh, but this is essentially going to make it so that we do need to encrypt this data um, and be very careful about it. And of course, really just generally all of this associated data, we recommend tokenizing and encrypting at rest and going through kind of the standards of HIPAA just to be safe, just to be careful with the user's data. In this particular case, you can see that this dashboard doesn't really have a lot of PHI data in it. Um, and so we're really not allowing the user to make major changes to their PHI data um, in this account settings area. So that's kind of an interesting alternate. Um, for this particular scenario, this platform has the user kind of completing that and it's getting tokenized and saved away. Um, and it's physically separate in a separate platform essentially. So it's not even gonna be available for them to edit. And this reduces the footprint of course as well. Um, just kind of going through a few other screens here just for edification. This is just kind of a nice view so you can also see some of the capabilities with the address book as well as being able to add a new address book entry. Um, and again, no PHI information here, but this would be a great place to consider putting PHI information that might be associated to an address, to a specific address if you needed to do that. So it's basically this idea of having um, shipping and billing address information, being able to modify those. And then the other big takeaway here is that we can do this for other types of entities as well. Okay, so this next example is pretty interesting because this is a physical device that we are monitoring with a set of participants, a doctor, and then we also have encouragers or kind of accountability group partners who can also be members of kind of viewing and having a role to view um, and access some of the data for this account. Now, this particular setup is for a glucose meter. And so you can see that we're selecting the diabetes type, the date of birth, and then the location. Now, the other interesting thing about this is we have a jumping off point to be able to update these other fields in the system. And so we'll just kind of quickly look at those so they can update their primary healthcare provider. Now, in this case, you can see that they only have a select box. So they have to go through a process to actually get a healthcare provider associated to their account. Um, and then finally, we also have the meter ID that they can update. The other thing is if you take a look at the, um, the other side of the account system, basically this is what someone would look like if they do not have access to a meter. They're just an accountability person or a, a doctor potentially. So they would need to upgrade in order to get those additional PHI fields. So we're trying to, again, reduce the footprint as much as possible so that whenever somebody is using the system, they're not going to unnecessarily provide us any information that we don't actually need. And then finally, here you can see um, in this particular example, uh, we have a just a very, very high level of the account settings. And again, you'll notice that we're not putting a lot of PHI information in here. In fact, we're really just showing the results delivery preference, and then uh, the user can change those preferences. So you can see it can be email, portal, or fax. Now, if you kind of go back into the process for, um, for this kind of configuration, uh, you can see we're getting a lot of the information during the checkout process, but we're not allowing the user to modify that during the um, kind of profile management phase of the project. So here they can specify some PHI information and they're actually gonna be going in and giving us details about their symptoms, for example, uh, but we're not gonna be showing that in the account settings. So this is really up to you when you're managing a HIPAA site. And we just generally want to encourage you to keep the footprint as minimal as possible while making everything as self-service as possible. Yes, this is a balancing act. You do want to optimize and you can make it role-based. So you can actually say, look, if this type of user isn't really privileged or shouldn't have access to these PHI fields, then let's not show them. So that's another way that you can kind of dynamically uh, reduce your footprint based on the type of user and what all they have associated with their account. Okay, so we hope that was helpful. And now we're gonna just briefly talk about next steps if you would like to get more information or potentially collaborate. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you would, we encourage you to consider the opportunity to take advantage of our complimentary discovery process. If you're really interested in getting more information about this particular topic, 
that is a great way to, in a no hassle, kind of low key way, get to interact with experts within this field. And our commitment to you, if you decide to engage our team for a complimentary discovery or just a complimentary strategy and discussion, is that we will absolutely point you in a positive direction, help you kind of accelerate on your path, even if there's not a good fit for us to directly work together. We have a lot of resources and a lot of experience in this area of focus, and we just encourage you to take advantage of that if you're seriously looking in this space. Uh, if there is a good fit, of course, we'll also present you with great options that you can consider for how we might work together. And either way, we certainly appreciate you taking a look at this video. We encourage you, if you think this was valuable, to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. And we will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.